Well, hello, YouTubers. How's everybody doing today? Um, I just wanted to pop in and give you an update on what's happening with this year's hornworms. Um, I've done about three batches, give or take. And so the last of my hornworm, um, the manduka mods, are now all crossed over the rainbow bridge. They did a great job. And I'm getting ready for another group that um, made it all the way to chrysalis mode and they're buried right now. So I'll have another batch starting probably in, in two weeks. But for now, I'm gonna update you and answer any of your questions and talk about stuff while we're waiting on that. Um, I'm really excited that some of you are starting to try um, breeding hornworms. I'm really enjoying our relationship because I can answer your questions and I try to get back to everybody and um, it's really a trial and error thing so keep that in mind you're gonna have disasters you're gonna go what did I do wrong why are they all dying why are they you know it's you're gonna go through all that just like I did many times but once you get there you're gonna be whipping these out like like nobody's business so hang in there please because it's worth it and it's fun and if you have kids and the kids are watching or if if you're I don't even know like if you're a teenager or uh, somebody in their 20s or 30s it doesn't even matter um, just enjoy it it's a it's a fun process okay so getting getting to it I've had some questions about um, certain things so I'm just gonna give you a run through now right now um, I've got my little last batch that I removed from the uh, Manduka moth enclosure and it's so cute because I can see them I don't know if you can see them but there's lots of them that started to develop as they were hanging on on the um, where they would lay them on on my nectar containers they were they were already developing so here's one little one let's see let's see if I can get it oh there there it is right there itty bitty so I've got a bunch in here now whenever they are taken from the man wherever you have found your eggs and you transfer them into their where they're really going to develop keep in mind they want to climb that's their instincts they're going to climb upward so and they need to they can't live on a wet paper towel they'll die guarantee you so they need to be able to climb you don't want things to be too wet inside um, so you even have to be careful when you're placing all that wet food in there for them you want to make sure that it's dry enough as well it's a really delicate balance. If it's too moist, they'll die. It, I would rather it be a little too dry than a little too moist. Um, so, having said that, I actually found this at, I think it was the dollar store or Walmart. It's, a, it's actually a fruit. You put fruit in there and wash your fruit out, you know, so this inner, inner container comes out of the outer container. And then what I did was I drilled three holes, not drilled, I used my um, heat rod and I, I put three holes in the lid, which I'll show you in a second. Anyway, what I've done is I've placed, meticulously placed food along the upper edge. It's kind of hard to get it to stay, all right? Because I know all those eggs that you can't see, the ones that are inside the wrap, they're gonna wanna climb the moment they go from a round ball out into the world as a little hornworm, which really just looks like a hair. But basically, they're gonna climb. So I tend to smush some of the food on the upper part because inevitably there will be some that will miss the food on the, on the paper towel and they're gonna start climbing the wall looking for food. So that's what I've done there. This is one of my hornworm containers. I have to change the date on it. Um, I keep it in the fridge, and after I slice it into blocks or whatever, I put paper towel in between just to keep it from getting overly moist. Always store your horn, hornworm food, your rapashi stuff in the fridge once you've made it. The only one I don't store in the fridge um, as a dry container um, is the hornworm food from Rapashi because it is too big 
It's a giant jug that I use. Um, but once you create the hornworm food, keep it in the refrigerator in a sealed container. And I always throw a clean paper towel in there. Now, here's the lid, and this is what I want to show you what I'm doing. This is the lid that goes to this fruit container, all right, that I've gotten creative with. I'm going to set the lid down on top of it. I've used this before, by the way. But it's fruit fly season, and I don't care where you live, when you're breeding things or when you're... Um, when you have reptiles and you've got moss and you've got stuff and you put a piece of fruit in your in your uh, earth in your um, superworm unit, if you have lettuce, whatever you're putting in your feeders, your crickets, I can guarantee you, even with a bio um, unit, you're going to have fruit flies. Fruit flies are inside fruit, and I don't want to get into the disgustingness of that, but yeah, when we eat fruit, we don't even know we're eating fruit fly eggs i hate to break it to you but it's harmless however when you put a piece of orange or you put a piece of fruit inside a container or inside a unit the isopods love 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 a slice of orange by the way and so do crickets it's like it's like disneyland for their brain they absolutely love a slice of orange all of them do um as far as the crickets isopods um anything like that now with fruit flies. They drive me crazy, but here's what I do. I am covering up the three holes, okay? With, again, you get a wad, you get a wad of um, screening from Walmart for five bucks, six bucks, whatever it is, and you just cut, you'll use it so much. You put it over the hole, and I'm gonna tape it. I'm just gonna tape it around the edges, and that will help to keep fruit flies out of my developing eggs, okay? They're, the fruit flies are harmless, but they just, they're a real nuisance right now. And I am a very, very big um, consumer of fruits and vegetables, like all year round, so it becomes an issue for me. Now here is the larger one. I still have one left. I've noticed something funny. Mine don't get that bright teal color, all right? I think this is like the normal color. It's really not that bright. And from here, it looks a little, it looks a little like just green, like a light green, all right? I pet mine too, they're really cute. Anyway, um, just so you know, I don't, I think they put something in the food when they develop the ones that are really super bright teal. But don't be alarmed if they're not. Now here's some here's some babies that I pulled eggs from, you know, a week or so ago. As you can see, it, they're getting a little bit bigger. I just put the hanging masks that I used. That was a brilliant idea on my part. Can I get a round of applause? Just kidding. Um, yeah, they laid the eggs all over the uh, face masks. So it was sterile. I just took the face mask, put it inside the big container and they developed it was cool so here's more that came from the face mask look at that look at that i didn't even have to touch the eggs just laid the face mask right in there um so you'll get creative again you always have to have things they can climb on all right that is really really important it doesn't have to be one of these that you got from um inside a container but you could literally put an old hairbrush that you clean inside. They will climb on all the hairbrush um, bristles. Do you understand what I mean? They just need something to climb on and stay dry. So it's, it's, it's funny, but you look around your house and go, oh my God, that would be perfect for my hornworms to, to nest on and just climb on. So that's that. Um, one of the things I found out I did wrong, and I'm learning every year just like anyone, I had two, um, I had a heat lamp. This is, this used to be my bearded dragon's enclosure. Um, this right here, uh, up here, is a heat, just heat only. And this is a full-on uh, sun, uh, it's a full spectrum, it's for a bearded dragon. I was letting 
the temperature inside, especially in the beginning, get way too hot. I lost almost an entire batch. They just were dying right and left. And I honestly thought that it was perfect temperature for them. But guess what? It, it was too much. So I couldn't figure it out. I finally just shut everything off. And lo and behold, the next batch made it just great. So although you need it warm, you don't have to have it that warm. So be careful of that. If you start losing a bunch of them, I was thinking it was the food, and it wasn't the food at all. It was the heat. So, having said that, I think I'm going to do another video just to show you what my Manduka Moth unit looks like right now. Um, I hope everybody is having a great summer. I hope you guys are having fun just trying to figure out how you're going to get started, what you're going to do. Everyone's asking me about what kind of plants to put in there. Manduka moth enclosure. Honestly, there's some plants that are just pretty safe. Um, it just spider plants are great. Anything that can handle uh, medium light, because wherever you have your Manduka moth enclosure, it's got to be tall enough that they can fly around in. And yet, um, I would think some people would put it on their porch. But if you do put it outside on your porch, you're going to get ants. I guarantee you. And ants are the worst. They're the worst. I got a real problem with ants. So, I mean, I don't anymore, but ants will destroy everything. And um, I respect ants. Okay, everyone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on and do another video on uh, what my enclosure looks like right now. And um, get ready for season uh, not season two but the next round that'll be arriving in a few weeks so keep giving me questions thank you for the thumbs up thank you so much for subscribing i really really love this it's it's a passion of mine and yes i do have others i do have lots of other things going on so i will do a video on my other babies as well and um, just remember god is awesome i hope you have a great day Stay blessed, be kind, and uh, that's about it. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.